Hurricane season has lived up to its concerning preseason billing. Now up to 17 named storms, five major hurricanes, and billions upon billions of dollars in damage, as well as hundreds of lives lost. And as hurricanes become more destructive, an old idea is now getting new life. Could humans develop technology that could weaken or even stop a hurricane? Well, yeah, interesting, and it would be great if it did work. So talk about that. Let's bring in our climate specialist. Carl Parker is here this morning with us. Carl, thanks for uh, coming in on a Saturday morning for you. Now, for decades here, uh, there's been an interest in trying to kind of modify the weather, modify hurricanes to weaken them somehow. And even today, still some are trying. As, as we, are we getting any closer to that? truly being a viable reality. Yeah, you know, there's been a little bit of movement on this. There's a Norwegian company that has figured out a way to actually change water temperatures. We know that hurricanes get their energy from very warm water. And what they do is they put these devices down very low in the water, very deep in the ocean, that release bubbles. And the bubbles come up and they drag up cooler water from below and lower water temperatures by several degrees. They have run tests on this and it actually does work. The only question is, could we actually put it into practice? And there are some scientists that are obviously you're going to have people on both sides yeah. that are skeptical uh, that this d makes sense in the long term. So wh why are they skeptical about this? Well, one of the big things is just scale. You know, can we do it at scale? Uh, there was a study that came out of the University of Miami, and what they found was that if you were to lower water temperatures over an area the size of Oregon, can you imagine that? I mean, that's a huge area by two degrees Celsius. That might bring you a 15% reduction in wind speeds. The question is, can you reduce water temperatures by two degrees over an area the size of Oregon? I mean, you're talking about a tremendous amount of effort and expense to do this, and it might not be feasible for that reason. So what scientists have said is maybe we should just take that, instead of spending billions of dollars to do that, maybe we should focus on mitigation hardening homes, that kind of thing, improving weather forecasting, uh, evacuations, all of that. There are other ways to attack this problem as opposed to trying to go after the storms themselves. Also spending a lot of energy, which then leads to our greenhouse gases and our global warming, which is also yeah. a big concern. So maybe not uh, doing modifying re uh, hurricanes, tropical weather. But what about talk about modifying our overall input of sun and, and the heating of the globe? There's a lot of uh, talk about maybe we can global warming. The solution could be Let's make things cooler or put a big umbrella to, to block the earth. Yeah, there's, there was a really interesting real-world test of this in 1991 when Mount Pinatubo erupted. It was an absolutely enormous volcanic explosion. And what it did is it put about 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere. And that remained there for two years. And you see this amazing photograph coming from the space shuttle where you can see this actual, there was a line there in the upper atmosphere that represents these volcanic aerosol clouds. And, you know, that was, and there you see it right there. You see the thunderstorms beneath. You see the dark line right there. That was those volcanic aerosol clouds. And what they did is they reflected sunlight and they actually lowered temperatures by about a half a degree Celsius. Now, we've warmed by 1.2 degrees Celsius, so you're talking about, you know, almost cutting that in half in over a shorter period of time, so we do know that that type of thing actually works. But it's a volcanic explosion. Right. <laughs> yes. And, and I would say, you know, at the, at the high level, people are thinking, okay, you know, lowering that temperature, that's a good thing, but that has to have implications down the line to, uh, to other things parts of our planet. It, it absolutely could. And, you know, so the there has been research on this. There are groups that are looking at doing this, and what they've done is they've taken balloons into the upper atmosphere and released these particles, and they've seen that it actually could work, and it might be able to be done at scale. But the way that they're thinking of this is a sort of break the glass kind of a thing. Like, you know, what if warming turns out to, you know, be occurring much more rapidly than the models projected? Maybe we should have this in our back pocket as an option. But yes, there are a lot of things about it that are worrisome, including agriculture. That is the big one. How will a lessening sunlight affect agriculture? And the other problem is if there are nations that were to act unilaterally because it is more reachable than hurricane modification, does that create global conflict? Do other nations go, hey, wait, our crop yields are way down. Why have you done this? And then we start to have a conflict. So it's a very controversial thing. But what scientists are saying is that we should 
should establish some sort of global governor, governance to find a way to, to go forward so people don't act unilaterally. Well, we could have a lot of unintended consequences, mm -hmm. yes. invasive species, and oof. A lot of stuff to figure out. Nothing's better than Mother Nature, though. Just, oof, no one acts like Mother Nature. Does. It'd be better to reduce emissions. That yes. would be the better way to go about it, for sure. Carl, thank you.